Organolithiums and Grignard reagents are great nucleophiles at carbon. And when we, when we combine them with aldehydes or ketones, it's perhaps not that surprising that they engage in nucleophilic addition to the polarized CO pi bond, or AD sub N reactions. This generates an alkoxide anion, which upon acidic workup gives an alcohol. And the addition of an organometallic reagent to a ketone or aldehyde is a great method for the synthesis of alcohols. It'll work for the synthesis of any substitution pattern, primary, secondary, or tertiary, depending on whether we start with formaldehyde, an aldehyde, or a ketone. And mechanistically, these reactions are quite simple. They're exactly the same mechanistically as the complex metal hydride reductions that we've already seen. These reductions with reagents like lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride that involve the nucleophilic addition of H- to the carbonyl carbon. It's just that now, using an organolithium or Grignard reagent, we're forming CC instead of CH bonds. And unlike the additions of heteroatomic nucleophiles that we saw in the last unit, all of these reactions are irreversible. Once we've generated the alkoxide, that is much, much more stable than the carbon ion structure we started with. And so the reaction stays on the product side and we don't have to worry about Le Chatelier's principle, removing water or anything like this. Many of these additions establish stereocenters, and you can see two examples of these reactions in the schemes below. The first reaction establishes a stereocenter at the former carbonyl carbon, and this is typical of these reactions. We have four different groups linked to the alcohol carbon, and thus this is a tetrahedral stereocenter. Because the Grignard reagent is achiral and the starting aldehyde was achiral, we should expect a racemic mixture of products here, and this is typical for these additions of RLI or RMGX to achiral ketones or aldehydes. Notice that we've added the elements of a hydrocarbon to the starting aldehyde, CH3 via the nucleophilic methyl group and H via protonation in acidic workup. Similarly, in the second case, using an allyl lithium organometallic reagent, we add the elements of propene to the starting ketone. We have the nucleophilic carbon and the attached double bond, the attached alkene group, as well as the hydrogen, which goes on in acidic workup. So from the aldehyde or ketones perspective, both of these reactions are nucleophilic additions. Mechanistically, the key elementary step is AD sub N, nucleophilic addition to a polarized pi bond. Let's use the first reaction as a context to explore the mechanism. The first thing I like to do when dealing with Grignard reagents or organolithiums is to draw the alternative resonance form of the organometallic reagent. So in the case of a Grignard, we break the carbon-magnesium bond toward carbon, forming a carbanion and MgBr+. This makes it eminently clear that the carbon is a good nucleophile and prompts us to look for an electrophilic atom in the other reactant, here an aldehyde. Of course, in the aldehyde with the polarized CO pi bond, the electrophilic atom is the carbonyl carbon. And in the first step of the mechanism, the nucleophilic methyl anion adds to the carbonyl carbon in an AD sub N elementary step. From a stereochemical perspective, this can happen two ways. If the methyl group comes from above, we end up with a structure like this with the alkoxide oxygen pushed to the back or behind the screen. However, if the methyl group comes from below, we end up with the opposite enantiomer with the methyl group behind the screen and the alkoxide oxygen pushed above the screen. After this nucleophilic addition step, the addition of acid, aqueous acid and workup, completes the mechanism and generates the neutral product. The idea here is that we use acid to protonate the anionic alkoxide oxygen. Naturally, this is going to happen to both enantiomers of the alkoxides that we generated in the first step. And so what we'll end up with after acidic workup is a mixture of enantiomeric alcohols. And for reasons we looked at previously, we should expect a 50-50 mixture of these two enantiomeric alcohols. So just to take stock of what we've done in case the stereochemistry got a little confusing, in the first step we did a nucleophilic addition step to the carbonyl group. This led to an alkoxide and here because a stereocenter was established in the alkoxide we got a mixture of enantiomers. Both of these enantiomers are protonated upon acidic workup to give a mixture of enantiomeric alcohols. We represent the mixture of enantiomers, by the way, using a wavy bond to the hydroxyl group, showing that we have a mixture of configurations in which the hydroxyl group is up and down. In the second case, no stereocenter is created. 
We won't draw the mechanism of this reaction, but it's exactly analogous to the mechanism we looked at here. The first step is nucleophilic addition of the allyl anion, the anion we get when we draw the alternative resonance form of this allyl lithium compound. And the second step is proton transfer from the aqueous acid added on workup to the alkoxide anion generated in the addition step.